right? Once again, no prepayment. Now here's a question that I have got a lot, so I wanna make sure we understand. The spouse of a veteran also is eligible. So if the VA guy happens to pass away, the spouse is still eligible to use the VA benefits. Okay, might wanna know that for an exercise in knowledge later. And it really doesn't matter how the spouse dies. That's one of the kickers. He could be in a skiing accident and die. The spouse still is eligible. The next loan is the agricultural loan or the USDA loan or Farmer Mac. Well, it's not Farmer Mac, but it's through the FSA. This loan is designed to help lower income people in rural areas. So not only does the person have to qualify, the property has to qualify. Let me give you an example. There is no house, not one, that qualifies for a USDA loan in Marion County. The population is too high. The average income is too high. It is not designed to help people in urban settings. But Shelby County, I listed a house, my cousin's house actually, that was USDA approved because it's in Shelby County. It's a rural county, population is lower, average income's lower. That's what the USDA really likes. Are we good? So those are your GSEs, FHA, USDA, FSA, the farm services. Those are your three big guys that are kind of insuring or guaranteeing loans. So once again, no such thing as an FHA loan. It's typically FHA insured, but we all say it, hey, I'm getting an FHA loan. So make sure you understand it. They don't loan the money. VA doesn't, FSA doesn't, all of that. Are we good so far? Ross, you're like a little whack-a-mole in my screen because you go away here and you pop up over here. And then when you pop them over here, that moves everybody around in the Brady Bunch scenario for me. All right. Those are the major types of loans you will deal with. The last two classes and those is how the government gets in. Now, there are some other loans that I want to talk about. And these are, uh, you guys ever watched the series The Arrow? was based on the comic book, The Green Arrow. And remember, he's an archer. And occasionally he'd be run along and he'd pull an arrow out and shoot it, and it would be a bomb. And then this one he'd pull out and it'd be a grappling hook. And I always wondered, how did he know which one was which back here? These loans are the same thing. These loans are loans that you wanna keep in your arrow quiver that you may never use, but the one time you go, hey, let's try this, you are going to seem like a friggin' genius. And people are gonna go, hey, that person saved a deal for me. You might wanna go talk to them, all right? So that's how these loans kind of work. So over there on page 244, here are some other financing techniques that we're gonna talk about. I, obviously, I, my computer is giving me some fits today. I'm not sure what's going on with that. So if you've got questions and I don't see you raising your hand, make sure you speak out. 
All right, so there on page 244 is a bunch of different loans we're gonna talk about. But the first one, which is not really listed there, it's actually, they mentioned it on page 214 in your book, but now is the best time to talk about it. It is called a purchase money mortgage. A purchase money mortgage. Write this down so that you understand it. It is a loan made to the seller by the buyer. <laughs> no, it's not. I was just testing to see if you were paying attention. Tell it's Monday. You ready? Let's try this again. It is a loan made by the seller to the buyer at the closing table. Let me say it again just to make sure so we can go two out of three or right. It is a loan made by the seller to the buyer at the closing table. So let's say there's an agreement to buy a house for a hundred grand. If the buyer can get an $80,000 loan, but he only has 10,000 in cash, how does that deal get done or does it get done because obviously as you can see there's a ten thousand dollar deficit here all right this is where the purchase money mortgage came comes in the seller will actually loan the ten thousand dollars to the buyer to make the difference is now, it like all the financing Say that again. Is it like owner financing when you purchase a hotel or motel? They owner it financing. It's a form of owner financing, yes. All right. But here's the key to it he's not really giving him $10,000, he's giving him $10,000 in the form of an IOU. Remember, we talked about the bank and the bank gives you money and you sign the IOU and the mortgage, there's no law that says it has to be a bank. There are private mortgages out there. I have a investment property now where the money was loaned to me by a private attorney here in town. I signed a note with him and I signed a mortgage with him. So every month, instead of writing a check to Fifth Third Bank, I write a check to the Bank of Ron. There's no law that says it has to be a bank. So what you end up seeing is this. Every month, this guy writes a check to the bank for $500 and he would write a second check for $50 and I'm making those numbers up, whatever it turns out to be. So in essence, this purchase money mortgage works like a second loan. It gets recorded it signs a note and all of that. And th this guy can charge interest. Typically it's a shorter term, but it gets recorded so that when the new owner, i.e. the buyer, every month he writes a $500 mortgage payment that people talk to the bank and he writes a second one for that $10,000 to the first bank of Billy Bob who gave him or loaned him the money at the closing table, all right? So that's called a purchase money mortgage. That's the first one. It is a loan made by the seller to the buyer at the closing table, okay? The second loan or the first one in the book that I wanna talk about is this thing called a package loan. Now a package loan is allows a lender oh okay hold on understand because remember this is the quiver arrow these loans are not your common everyday loan so you're not going to pick up the phone and call quicken to get these kind of loans every loan that we're talking about now is a specialty loan 
that you're going to actively have to seek out somebody or they may be considered commercial lenders. So get, first of all, think that this is not a generic loan where you're gonna call Five Stones Mortgage and go, I wanna get a package loan. We don't do those, sorry, because it's a unique, special kind of loan, all right? All of these are. So the package loan allows the lender or the borrower to use personal property to mortgage. Typically, we sell personal property with a bill of sale. You go buy a candy bar at Walmart, you get a receipt. When you buy real property, you get a mortgage, all right? This package loan allows you to mortgage personal property, okay? So in our world, I write you a purchase agreement. I ask for the pool table in the basement. The pool table is typically personal property, but what's the value of that pool table? $200 compared to the $400,000 house. It's such a small percentage that most lenders won't say anything, but change the story. Suppose I'm buying a hundred unit apartment complex that now has a hundred sets of washers and dryers and a hundred refrigerators that go with it. That $2 million price tag might have $200,000 of personal property because there's so much of it. Now that value is getting a very large percentage. That lender is going to say, I can't loan you $2 million because really the property is only worth 1.8. The other 200,000 is washers and dryers and personal property you would seek out a package loan that would allow you to include that 200,000 of personal into the $2 million mortgage. I see a whole bunch of deer in the headlight. How often do banks actually give out package loans though? It's a very unique loan, all right? You, like I said, you would have to seek out a package loan and probably 80% of all the lenders you talk to are gonna go, we don't do that. Paul Blackwell Capital. Oh, okay. So it's not, the, these are not the average loans that you're gonna go find at Five Stone. You will actually have to actively seek out a lender that does package loans. And since they're all like kind of a tight community, the guy at Fifth Third is going to go, hey, man, go see Blackwell. They can do that loan for you. Okay, thanks. We can't do it. Sorry. So it's not a very, for, for Blackwell, for Blackwell, it's probably very common because that's what they do. But in the grand scheme of lending, it's probably a very uncommon loan. All right. The next loan I want to talk about is called a blanket loan. All right. A blanket loan like a blanket allows you to throw one loan over multiple properties. If you are an investor and you wanted to go buy three houses, now you've got to go through three closings, three paperwork uh, package, all of this. Or what you could get is one, $300,000 loan and throw it over all the properties like a blanket. So now you have one loan, but it is secured by multiple properties as the collateral. And like I said, the easy way to think of it, let's think of it like a packet or a blanket. Now here's the problem with this. If you were to look up this property, you would see the value at 100, but how much is the loan? It would show a lien of 300,000. 
So when you look at that property, it looks like it's way upside down. So you just have to keep that in mind. So now with, with the blanket loan, there is a term called a partial release. And don't worry about you remembering this. <laughs> the lender that does this understands it and knows. What a partial release says is this, we will allow you to sell one of these properties and we will partially release the lien providing you pay a down payment to pay down the loan. So what you get, it looks like this. This guy sells this house for 150, he will keep 50,000 and then pay down the loan. So what ends up happening is this, this goes away. Now the loan value is 200. And then he sells this house for 150. He keeps the 50, pays off the loan of 100. They remove the lien. He now has a balance. Then he sells this house, keeps the 50, pays the 100. It removes the lien and it's now paid off. And what ends up happening is there's his profit on the three houses. So this works really well for, like I said, investors that are buying multiple properties that don't want to go through multiple closings, multiple appraisals, multiple loan packets. It's one loan over all of it.